Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Crazy Flyer 175 channel. Today, uh, well, once again, getting back into X Plane. Uh, you know, I was doing some more research. I made a few tweaks to the flight sim after, you know, some of the issues we were uh, dealing with. And, uh, you know, I just decided to go ahead and uh, keep on playing X Plane. Wanted to fly the, fl the uh, 737 a little bit more and get used to it. Um, we're not going to do VAT sim tonight. Once again, we're just going to try to get used to the 737. Hang on guys, all of a sudden I'm getting double audio on my headset and delayed audio, so I'm not hearing myself like I should be. That should fix the issue. There we go. Much better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's get back into it. I've already got the airplane powered up, so that'll save us a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get people uh, started boarding. We already got the airplane service. Uh, but we're going to go through the whole thing and uh, get the airplane rocking and rolling once again. So I haven't put the flight plan in yet. We're going to go ahead and do that. So one of the changes I did made, I did go ahead and purchase a Navigraph subscription. So now my airplane databases are always up to date. I only did the nav data. I didn't do like the jump charts or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I figured, you know, it's worth it to pay for the nav databases at least. So it's all up to date and current now. So everything in the nav database will match my charts. And you can see we actually have procedures in here, which is awesome because we didn't have that <coughs> on my uh, flight earlier today. And that was a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky to deal with. So bring up the dispatch release for you guys. Um, is it broadcasting? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, so this is what we got going on. We're going to go from Raleigh, Durham, where we left off. The same gate, Bravo 21. Had our nice sit here, got dinner. We're going to go up to uh, Washington, D.C. tonight, uh, Ronald Reagan National Airport. And yeah, that'll be what we'll do for tonight's flight. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this set up. We already got it initialized, but we're going to get our uh, flight plan in there. So departing here, we actually need to listen to the ATIS. Oh, it didn't keep the ATIS frequency. Uh, do, 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 hang on. Over here, it's 23.8. Raleigh Durham INTL Information Lima. 2100 Zulu weather. Wind 210 at 8. Visibility eight more than 10. Meter. Sky conditions 3800 scattered. 25,000 broken. Temperature 30. Dew point 21. Altimeter 2998. Arriving runways 23 right, 23 left. Alright, so we'll be off runway 23 right tonight. Departing runways 23 right, 23 left, 14. Advise on initial contact, you have Lima. Alright, 23 right is going to be our runway. Uh, for departure. Alright, so we got 23 right and come back over to the release. So we're going to be on the Bexco 4 departure. To the blousey transition we'll answer that and now the arrival is going to be the caps three uh ways transition we don't know our runway for sure quite yet so that should have everything in there and so we're literally going from blousey direct to waves so we're just going to bring waves up there that deletes that discontinuity and now we'll just verify we'll look at the map view that was so much easier than <laughs> the way I had to do it earlier today I had to put in every point manually all the way but you can see there we've got our flight plan flows real nicely from the departure right into the arrival uh, it's still a relatively short flight so that makes life easy that's all in there I love how easy that was all right now we're gonna look at weights so we got our weights up here and let's hop on over to the tablet to weight balance fuel section. So first of all, fuel. 13.9 uh, is min block. Um, I like to have a thousand pounds above min takeoff when we depart the gate. So we're gonna load up uh, to 14.4 for our fuel today. So fuel, we're gonna go 14, 400, enter. And we're gonna come back here. We'll call a field truck, get them on their way. 
so that I can start getting the airplane fueled up. Now, uh, our plan takeoff weight, 145. And currently, we're at 108 with our fuel load. So 145 minus 8 is what? 37,000 pounds of payload is what's expected, so we'll go ahead and put that in. 37,000 pounds, get the airplane loaded up. And that takes us to a takeoff weight of 145. That's a match. And let's see. And we got our CGs there. So we're going to leave that up here. We're going to go ahead and get our perf in it. So uh, zero fuel weight now is going to be 132, 144. According to the paperwork, that pretty much agrees within 100 pounds. We'll call it 132.1. Reserve fuel on our release here. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, 3.7, so 3,700 our reserve fuel. Cost index, I think we're cost index 30. Yes, we are for this flight. We got 30 in there. And planned fuel, we're planning on coming off the gate here with uh, 13. Or no, 14.4 off the gate. And cruise altitude, we're going to be cruising today. We're actually filed a little bit higher. We might even amend this, but currently we're filed at uh, 290. Cruise winds 235 at 25. Uh, it didn't give us a nice deviation on the flight plan. And. Let's see, so we'll execute that. We're using your reserve fuel, that's just because we haven't been fueled up all the way yet. We'll ignore that for now. We're gonna do a takeoff one. 96.6, 96.6, looks good. Takeoff, we're gonna do flaps five. We got a nice long runway here out of Raleigh, Durham. And CG, so this is where we're gonna look. Takeoff weight, CG, 25.8% MAC. Uh, hang on for just a second, guys. I'm gonna mute myself. Got a quick phone call I gotta answer. All right, guys, sorry about the uh, delay there. I'm uh, moving to a new apartment here. We actually take possession in two days, and that was just my new roommate had a question for me. Uh, I've got a friend that uh, we're going in on a really nice two-bedroom apartment together. But uh, anyways, besides the point, that's all done. Okay, so we got CG in there. You guys saw that uh, that did give us a trim number at five degrees. 
And so we've got 136, one, oops, yeah, five degrees, so update these a little bit. 138, 139, 142, and five degrees on the trim wheel is set. I think we have got that all ready to go. Pastors should be done loading here pretty quick. We're gonna go ahead and get the APU started. Bring these online. I don't think we have any fuel in the center. Uh, it does not look like we do. So we'll leave these uh, center pumps off. APU's on its way up. And uh, let's see here. We're gonna bring the hydraulics online. Bring yaw damper on now. Uh, let's see. So flight altitude's gonna be 290, and DC is pretty much sea level, so we'll set 50 feet. Let's do a quick flow across the panel. Make sure everything is set up as it should be. That's normal, okay. Pro peeps are on. Those will go away after we get everything buttoned up and the engine started. Uh, we've got that. APU is up. We're entering APU generator online. Ground power is disconnected. APU bleed and packs. Come on, we got the air conditioning on the airplane now. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to be ready. Uh, I did set our time of departure. I want to say we had it set for like 6.30. We're going to be plenty early, though. Do you need to set up the mode control panel here? Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and brief our departure. So we have got the... Um, what are we on the Bexco departure? That's right. All right, let me get the flight plan in here real quick. So K Raleigh Durham, K DCA, and actually, why don't we go ahead? We'll actually just put the flight plan in here. So we're doing the Bexco departure to Bost Bousy. I think I called up Blousy before, and then we're doing ways to the Caps Three arrival into. BC, so there's a route of flight right there. Um, let's go here to Raleigh Durham Airport page. Procedures, and we're going to brief up the Bexco departure. And I think about the time we get that done, everybody should be loaded up and uh, we'll be out of here. Alright, so the Bexco departure here out of Raleigh Durham, we're going to be off 2 3 right. Climb on assigned heading. We'll play in runway heading, which is uh, be about 230. So let's go here. Let's pull up the airport diagram. Procedures diagram. And runway heading is going to be 234. Top altitude on our departure is going to be 6,000 feet. Or otherwise assigned. We'll plan 6,000. That's in there. Flight directors come on both sides. Cool. Um, yeah, so that one's a pretty simple one. Just tower assigned 8,000 radar vectors to Amy at her above 2,500 feet. Which, uh, Amy, 2,500 feet and above is in the box, so that should work nicely. Bring that back to the map page. Um, so yeah, taxi out should be pretty simple. We'll expect to basically just go Foxtrot and uh, Bravo 9 for runway 23 right out of Raleigh, Durham. Alright guys, um, so let's see, we're going to run, so what I decided to do as well, so I still have the checklist pulled up here on the iPad, I'll go ahead and minimize it, so this is just to give you an idea of what I'm using, but I figured in flight, this is actually a much more simple, concise checklist just on the yoke, I think we'll use that for the in flight, but uh, yeah, let's just make sure we got everything set. So I'm just kind of going down here. I mean, a lot of this doesn't apply. We'll go down to like pre-flight procedure. Um, flight track is on. Auto throttle is off. Indicated airspeed. I have it set for 210. It's a good climb speed, honestly. Uh, altitude cruise. Or altitude is set to the departure altitude 6,000 feet. 
Um, fuel flow, that's been reset. Um, let's see, landing gear lever is down, speed breaker lever is closed, press lever is closed, start lever is cut off, yacht amp is on with the IRS being aligned. And we're complete, up to pushback and start. Alright guys, um, yeah. It looks like all the passengers are just about ready to go. We're going to make our welcome board announcement and then we're going to get the doors closed up and we're going to get out of here a few minutes early. It's always nice. A little bit nicer than the last flight. Folks, welcome aboard American Airlines. Uh, we're currently in the process of uh, wrapping up the final paperwork. We should be on our way momentarily. Great pleasure to have you on board with us today. If you have any requests that will make your trip a little bit more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask one of your crew members again. Welcome aboard. Miss that one. Emergency lights, horn arms. All right. I said everybody's loaded up, so we're gonna go ahead and get the doors closed up, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. Alright, so we've got everything disconnected from the airplane. Chocks are released out of that to turn it on. Oh, okay. The controls, I swear, are like completely um, backwards of what I would think they would be. Okay, so those are all disconnected. Theoretically. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close the forward entry and cargo doors. Alright, everything's disconnected from the airplane. We're gonna turn the beacons on. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, the boarding door is not closed. Flight attendants prepare your doors for departure. Cross check, fair price job, send by for all call. Alright, we've got everyone strapped in. Give us a ring if you need anything. All right, door has been closed and locked. All right, guys, we're going to play in the pushback, and we'll get on out of here. Round of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Round of cockpit, tow is driving up. All right, guys, we got a tow on the way. One quick double check, flow here. Everything is normal. Here's our tow. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Alright, he is connecting the tow. This is one of like the, uh, I don't know what you call them, I call them like the scoop style. It kind of grabs the nose wheel and lifts it up just off the ground. kind of see the nose rising up just a little bit as the toe so is connected down. and bypass pin inserted release parking brake all right guys brakes austers off clear push starting pushback and you may start engines how about that starting engine two all right guys we're gonna start engine two so the first thing we do is turn off the air conditioning because the engines use air pressure from our apu to get started Got that done. AP bleed is on. We're gonna start engine two. Turn that to ground mode. Sorry. 
can see here the N2 is rising. Looking for about 20-ish percent and stabilized. There we go, 22% and the fuel selector comes on. We've got light off on the EGTs, N2 rise, N1 rise. And starter cutout is good. We got a good start. We'll bring the right hand generator online. I think we'll go out on one engine. We'll see here. We'll bring the packs back on for a minute so people are getting their air conditioning down here in Raleigh. It's pretty hot down here in the south. Reset my track IR. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Alright, sir. Parking brake set. Clear this. Disconnecting end. tow. Stand by. Roger. Alright, giving him the disconnect signal. Toe is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. See you guys. All right. Look for the toe off the right hand side here. There it is. We got the wave off. All right. There we go. Flaps are five. One thing I forgot to do on my last flight, but we're not gonna forget it today. We're gonna do a flight control check. Black trolls are, are good. All right, and we got the wave off. So we'll jump back in here. I'm gonna see what this checklist has. Now, once we complete this after or engine start checklist, which really it's done. We've already got everything. Well, we haven't completed it yet because we still gotta start the other engine. Uh, one thing I did forget to do is arm the auto throttle under the uh, engine start there. Hydraulics are on, fuel pumps are on, anti-collision lights are on, position lights are on steady, auto throttles armed, engine ignition, well, let's see, we've already got one start complete, we're gonna do the other one, so we got flap set, lights as required, and that is complete. So we'll reference back to that just to make sure we get everything done for the engine to start, but that's more of a flow than a checklist if I'm honest. All right, we got brakes released, clear right, clear left. We got the taxi clearance, so we're gonna taxi via Foxtrot Bravo 9, I think it was, to runway 23 right. We're going out on one engine just to try to save a little bit of fuel. The AP, even though we're keeping the AP running, it uses less uh, fuel than the engines do, so. Actually, I should have engine bleeds off at the moment. Let's see, APU's running. Clear right, clear left. Well, it looks like we're going to be number one for the runway, so we'll go ahead and turn packs off. And we'll start engine one. Normally in a two-man cockpit, one person will be taxiing the airplane. That's generally the captain will be taxiing. The FO would be doing this stuff that way. 
the guy taxiing can stay focused outside. Obviously, I'm doing this single pilot, so but higher workload. There we go. Fuels in, light off, and two rise and one rise. All pressure. Watch for a hot start. Watch for a hung start. Jet skin. It's climbing a little bit up there. There we go. Okay, it did. Didn't quite hit the red line, so we're good there. It was a little warm, but not a hot start. All right, starter is cut out. That's all good. APU gens offline now. Switch the bleeds over to the engine. Packs come back on for faster comfort. And we can shut down that APU. We're done with it for for now until we land in DC. All right, so just to review the departure, it's gonna be my departure, runway 23 right, tower assigned heading up to 6,000 feet for the initial altitude. First fix is gonna be Amy at her above 2,500 feet. And uh, that's all I got. Let's run our checklist here. Configuration is checked. Speed brakes are checked. Flaps are five green light. Stab trim, five units is set. Uh, takeout briefing is reviewed. Cabin. Uh, actually, so to get the flight attendants to call cabin secure, you have to turn on the wing light. Right there. We're waiting on that right there. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Thanks, guys. We'll see ya. All right, and cabin secured. Mode control panel is set, and we'll go to that point. I guess that's kind of the line there. We'll go below the line once we're up here to the runway. Getting a little more comfortable now, getting back in the 7-3. I think I could, uh, maybe after this flight, I think I'll be comfortable enough to jump into uh, that sim with the airplane. And not be a complete idiot. <laughs> I think I know somewhat of what I'm doing, hopefully. Alright, we are almost up here to the end of the runway, getting real close now. This next uh, left turn, actually this left turn right here is Bravo 9. This will bring us to the end of the runway. And we'll get our takeoff clearance, we'll go... Um, take off checklist below the line. Bigger final. Clear runway. I have AI traffic off, but you know, I just do it out of habit. Alright, guys, they cleared us for takeoff runway 2 3. Turn those on. Oops, landing lights and strobes are on. Alright, flight tents are notified. Alright, and transponder TARA and 2000 was the code we were assigned for the transponder below the line. MCP set, transponder TARA, strobe lights are on, landing lights are on. Four dig off checklist is complete. Alright, guys, runway 23 is correct runway. We are lined up. Here, almost. Get the engine spooled. Y'all ready for takeoff? Ready or not, here we go. Toga. And Toga is set. Center line. There we go. 80 knots. Feels a bit tail heavy. V1, V1, rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Four hundred. 
heading. One thousand. But we'll change to town. Let's go flaps one. Twenty five hundred. Don't want to descend. All right, flaps up. Pilot on. Go B nav. All right, we have been given direct to Amy, so we'll go Amy, direct, execute, and L nav. And we got to climb up to uh, fifteen thousand for now. Clouds, we go. Oh, maybe. We're just kind of skimming the bases. Flying here. Alright, after takeoff checklist, conditioning, air conditioning, pressurization set, and the start switches are normal. Landing gear is up. And selected off. Auto brakes off. And flaps are up. No lights. And altimeter set as required after takeoff checklist complete. Let's get a little external view. Watch your ears, might get a little loud. passenger cabin view. I did change back to the regular winglets uh, for this view to be a little more accurate with the American Airlines. Alright, well now we can sit back and relax a little bit. This flight is going a lot smoother than my first fly earlier today. There's 10,000 feet. I'll turn the landing lights off. Taxi lights, and then we can turn off the logo. Wing and wheel well, they'll stay as they are. Or give him the double channel, I know we're above 10. <clears throat> Our Advantage Aviator MasterCard is another great way to earn miles for everyday purchases and enjoy benefits, such as your first check bag free preferred boarding, and no foreign transaction fees. Not an Aviator card member? See a flight attendant and receive an exclusive offer when you apply in-flight today. Shortly, we will begin our in-flight service. We offer a selection of complimentary beverages. Wi-Fi service. How's everybody doing tonight? A thousand to go. 
14, climb and 15. All right, they just gave us a climb all the way up to our cruising altitude 290. 29, or flight level 290 is set. Looks like the airplane is just slightly out of trim laterally. I don't have a fuel imbalance, do we? Oh, we got a very, very slight fuel imbalance. It's only like 40 pounds off. Let's take a look and see what uh, Reagan National is looking like tonight. Take a look at the weather. We got winds out of the south, 180 at 11, so it looks like we'll be landing at 19. Uh, 10 miles with ready for you at 6,500 feet. Altimeter is 2992. So we're going to wish we're standards. Um, yeah, looks overall pretty nice there. Some cumulonimbus distant northwest to the north. Uh, but thankfully we're coming from the south, so life should be relatively easy for us. In fact, I can kind of show you here the weather they're talking about. I'll pull up the iPad. You can see up here. That's actually a really good one right there. See that it's got the magenta uh, coloring in the radar there. That's some extreme precipitation. We won't have to deal with it though. We're staying uh, pretty far south. And obviously we're coming from Raleigh Durham. So we're not going to be anywhere near the weather. Which makes our life easy for tonight. She turned into kind of a nice evening here. I'm going to go to the outside view. Watch your ears. Did a good job modeling the. I think that's just the one off the default 737, but it's pretty well modeled. I don't know, maybe Zebo. Maybe the Zebo mod has some more finesse to the interior, but either way, it looks really good. Like, it looks legit. We are landing with a lot of fuel. We're going to have like 10,000 pounds. I don't know, maybe that's not a lot. I mean, I'm used to flying a little bit of a smaller jet, so... Yeah, we're typically, the airplane I fly, typically land with around 
Anywhere from 3,500 to maybe 4,500 pounds is pretty common of uh, fuel on board. You know, and that's still, you know, 4,500 pounds. We could go for an hour and a half on that if we needed to. Quite a bit of fuel. Sometimes even more, you know, if, if we have like really bad weather, so we've got an alternate filed and, you know, maybe there's weather's bad enough they give us some contingency or hold fuel uh you know we can sometimes land with a lot of fuel but a good couple hours at least on board when you're landing but it's better to have too much fuel and too little it's easy to get rid of fuel not so easy to uh well it's impossible to get fuel in the air unless you're in the military peek around uh, Twitch real quick and see who's online tonight. Twitch, at least for the uh, at least for the channels that I follow. But, yeah. Still a more walk through the cabin. Explore the inside of the 737 a little bit. I need to see if there's a mod out there to move around quicker. I mean, this is just kind of the default method to move around uh, within the cabin, but. Yeah, so this must be the uh, default X-Plane interior, because there's Austin Meyer <laughs> right there. Apparently, if you go up a little too high in the cabin, uh, you get a loud noise. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, that is obnoxious. That's cool. They even got like the touch screen there modeled pretty well. The galley's pretty well filled in. You got all the your uh, boxes. Apparently they don't keep any of the carts up front. Go to the lavatory. I don't think it lets you in the lavatory. That's funny. All right, well, let's see. How much longer do we have until DCA? It's not a very long flight. In fact, we're only like 20 minutes out from this point. You can see our top of descents here real shortly. We'll go ahead and turn the seatbelt sign off for a few minutes for the passengers, give them an opportunity to uh, walk around a little bit. Um, but we're going to start getting ready to land here in D.C. So, I'll pull up the iPad for you guys. Pull up the arrival. We're flying the CAPS arrival today into Washington, D.C. There it is, CAPS 3 RNAV arrival. We are picking it up. Oh, it is vertical. Uh, we're picking it up from Waves. So, we got Waves. Between 21 22 at 210. But we're going to pretend that ATC just gave us a send via. So we're landing to the south today. So we're going to be going, it looks like, up here to the BAM intersection. Is our bottom altitude 6,000 feet? But we'll set 6,000 feet in the altitude selector window. And the airplane should make all our restrictions. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go through here real quick with the FMS. We'll cross compare to our chart. So we have waves 21 to 22 at 280. Case set 17 
uh, about 17, it's already starting the descent. Or no, it's just slowing back for cruise, I guess. Uh, Elap 280 between 14 and 20, that's in there. Bully uh, 16 to 13, Caps 10 to 13. Uh, and then we'll be going to Phillips. Oh, we didn't put the arrival in there. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to anticipate we're going to get runway 19, probably the river visual. We'll back it up with the Arna of approach. Uh, we'll turn on the glide path. Uh, it's caps 3, waves transition, RNAV 19. We'll look up there and make sure it's in there. Yep, there we go. So yeah, caps 13, 10, then we got Derek. Do we? Hold on. I didn't put the wrong one in there, did I? Oh, does it transition? It might transition like right into uh And I gotta pull up the RNAV one then. I'm a bit confuzzled here. Procedures RNAV approach. Let's zoom out a little bit for you guys here while we're figuring this out. Uh RNAV one nine approach. It starts at Fergie. What runway did I put in there? Arrival, arrival. Oh, there we go, Fergie route. I was gonna say, that didn't feel right. All right, caps. We got the approach in there. We missed out to bad. Yeah, let's execute that for now. It's only got my arrival going down to uh, caps. I don't think it's right. Hang on. Arrival. Arrival. Caps 3. Wave. Uh, path on. Route. Legs. There we go. And then now we've got Phillips. Yeah, alright, that's all lining up now. Phillips, Mojo, Giles, Smoot, Bam for the bottom at 6,000. All these speeds and altitudes are matching. And then Packy, and then Vector for Fergie Graves. Yeah, alright, I like that. We're going to execute that now. We're still going direct to waves, it looks like. Now it's all agreeing. Cool, guys. I finally got it figured out. Alright, so the approach is going to be the RNAV approach runway 09. Actually, it'll be the river visual. We're going to back up the RNAV. For tonight. Uh, let's get the river visual plate pulled up. Ooh, there it is. Here's the river visual. Um, the visual approach is going to require. It's a little bit different than the jet plates I'm used to brief in here. Requires uh, 3,503 miles visibility. We've got that. Um, aircraft may follow the river to the airport or may proceed via the RNAV RNP19 to SeaTac and then follow the river. Note the clearance for the visual approach does not authorize penetration of P56. So we got the prohibited area there around the Capitol and White House and all that. So you can see here the approach course is that dashed line there on the right hand chart. This goes down the middle of the river, and then our airport's down here at the bottom. We're going to land runway 19, which is the runway kind of pointing towards the south. And that's our approach. Pretty simple one uh, with the visual. It's got to really make sure not to enter the prohibited area. Otherwise, we get in trouble. We're going to go ahead and get people back in their seats now. The seatbelt sign is on. Please and the seatbelt. Make the top descent announcement. Well, as you can see, we are descending. Uh, seatbelt sign is on. If you happen to be up and about, please return your seat. Keep your seatbelt fastened for the main of the flight. On behalf of the flight crew, we appreciate you being with us today. 
Wish you a very safe and pleasant journey to your final destination. Hope to see you back here with us soon. Thank you. All right, guys. And uh, let's see. Set checklist, pressurization landing altitude set, anti-ice not required. Approach brief and fuel is discussed. Indicated the airspeed and altitude bugs. We actually did not set our landing speeds yet. Sorry guys, let me get the iPad out of your way. This one is thankfully pretty easy. So you can see here, here's our approach reference. Uh, estimates we'll be landing at 143,000 pounds gross weight. Now it's kind of a short runway. It's not extremely short, but it's a little short. 7,000 feet. Out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to say let's go with the flaps 40 landing. That gives us a little lower approach speed, use a little less runway. We'll put that in there, 141. And wind correction, plus 5, I'd say is good. And yeah. So that is now bugged and set. Uh, we'll do an auto break 3 landing. Better be hit the brakes a little too hard than not hard enough at this airport. I don't know if y'all remember, a few weeks ago there was a, I think a Frontier Airlines A320 ran off the end of the runway. Didn't do any damage, nobody got hurt or anything, but you know, it can happen. You definitely want to, you know, with these slightly shorter runways, you don't want to float and you don't want to wait too long to get on the brakes. You want to get on the brakes as soon as you can after you, you know, get the weight down on the wheels on landing. Alright guys, I'm going to take just a real quick break, grab just a quick drink of water, I'll be right back, right back with you on our approach into DC. And I am back with you. Let's get a little flyby. Pretty cool. Drag required. Yeah, she'll need a little help slowing down, so we're gonna use some speed brake. What the speed brake does is watch your ears skinny a little bit loud. Out on the wings, you can see these little panels right here. They're raised up a little bit. Helps create some drag. Helps the airplane slow down. Generally, I'll try to use the minimum amount of uh, speed brake that I need to. But, uh, let's see, 2992 is the altimeter. And 2992 is now set. We're below 17,000 feet. So let's see, approach checklist, we've kind of already done this, there's not a lot for us to do. Um, altitudes and instruments set and cross checks. Approach aids are checked and set. This is an RNAV approach. Well, really it's a visual approach backed up with an RNAV. So we don't need to set like our nav radio, nor do we need to set the course or anything because, uh, you know, there's really no need for it on this particular approach. Since it's an RNAV. Alright, looks like we're back on speed. I'm going to try to retract the speed brakes now. And we'll see if the airplane will maintain speed for us.
It looks like a pretty nice evening out here in uh, Washington, D.C. So I kind of want to keep an eye on frames for a second. The only, now that I'm comfortable with the airplane again, the only thing that I have to be careful about in uh, flying on VATSIM is I need to make sure that my frame rates are staying up high enough. So you can see right now I'm running 30 frames a second. is isn't bad, but I know that the VATSIM will take a few frames away, especially if it's like busy airspace, you know. Uh, you might lose some frames per second. And the thing about VATSIM is if you uh, if you dip below 20 frames a second, supposedly you'll get disconnected. Um, you know, because it can create synchronization issues if you're less than 20 frames per second. So I don't want that to happen to me uh, when I'm flying on uh, on all that. So. Alright, we're getting pretty close here to 10,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and do this just a minute early. Get the airplane uh, lit back up. I'll go ahead and chime the cabin now. Let them know we're coming through 10,000 feet here real shortly. There, we're kind of in a little bit of a haze cloud layer. I think it'll clear up as soon as we get through it. A couple more thousand feet here. There, the airplane. Oh, I guess it's leveling off for an altitude restriction. There you can see it's going to keep us level for just a few miles and then at uh, 11,000 feet it'll continue on down. <clears throat> this airplane actually does VNAV very well, I've noticed. Um, you know, compared to like the Amber Air Phenom that I was flying last few flying videos, uh, you really have to babysit that airplane and really step it down between fixes. This airplane, you got the procedure in here and it'll really follow it pretty well. I mean, you just have to monitor it. You know, obviously you saw earlier where it told us it needed drag, so we had to, you know, extend speed brakes. Otherwise, it does really well. It's very natural, uh, easy to operate in that regard. All right, there's 10,000 feet. I'm just gonna monitor, make sure it's gonna slow down to 250 knots for us. That is the speed limit below 10,000 feet. doing right now. Doing a real slow descent. Let's see, we're almost to Mojo. Mojo intersection is supposed to be at 250 knots, so it uh, should be slowing. Does it not have Mojo in at 250? It does. There it goes. It brought the speed back. No. It's confused. Here I am telling you how great it is, and I can't seem to figure it out. 
should be at 250. I don't know why it's like the 240. I guess that's part of the uh, descent profile. Let's do a 250 slant. Apparently it won't let it won't let me put 250 in there. We'll put it in there and see if it'll. Yeah, very interesting. I'll have to look at that next time on preflight and see if I can change that to 250. Set drag is required, but I'm just gonna let it kind of stay at 250 because that's the speed we're supposed to be at on our arrival, anyways, inside of Mojo. Yeah, it might need a little drag. We're like four knots fast. We'll see. Let's see what direction it's trending. Yeah, it's trending up a little bit. Yeah, we'll give it a little bit of a little bit of speed break. All right, we should be on the ground here in just a couple. I don't know, maybe five minutes here in DC. So this approach is a fun one. So it's going to be hand flown. Um, because we got that prohibited area, we have to be real careful uh, about this approach. Basically, we're going to stay over the river or anywhere to the west of the river. We're safe from the prohibited airspace. If we go east of the river, in real life, you'd have to uh, do a bit of a carpet dance. Probably get called by the Secret Service. <laughs> At the very least, the FAA would be calling you. Or you'd be calling them after you land for uh, violation of prohibited airspace. So let's not do that. <clears throat> yeah, so right here, I don't know if it's just because of the sunset That's or what, got. but we're only getting 25 frames a second. 23. That's not great. I don't know if you guys can see it. Kind of lagging a little bit. All right, we're leveling 6,000 feet. Let's go ahead and bring speed brakes back. And make sure it's armed. There we go. All right, it's gonna level us at 6,000 feet here. This is at uh, AM intersection. Now we're going out here to Packy. Once we get there, then typically they'll either give you a heading or we'll give you a direct to Fergie. And clear for the approach. We'll anticipate that. Alright, so I went ahead and just gave us a descent down to 3,000 feet. We'll set 3,000 feet in the selector window. And we're going to go vertical speed mode. Actually, let's just do a level change here at uh, 250. That'll bring us down pretty quick. So you can see there, so now it's just going to pitch to maintain 250 knots. It'll bring the nose down. It'll keep the thrust levers back here, all the way back at idle.
Alright guys, uh, so we just passed Packy, they give us direct to Fergie, so we're gonna go down here to Legs, take Fergie, activate, and execute. Now the airplane should make her turn directly to Fergie. Fergie will be at 3,000 feet. And we're gonna start getting the airplane slowed up here. Thousand to go. Yeah, we'll uh, now we'll switch to back to vertical speed so we can keep the descent coming here at about 500 uh, feet per minute. Alright, we've been instructed to cross for the at above 3000 and we were cleared for the river visual approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, back over here to the map. So I think Sea Talk is the final approach fix. We'll set 1500 feet for Sea Talk. Actually, I lied. Thousand to go. Let's get leveled down here at uh, 3000 feet first. Then we're going to set. Uh, 1500 for sea talk. We're gonna arm the approach and let the airplane come on down. Alright, there's 3,000 feet from approach here, see if it'll follow it down. See the path is alive there, we'll see if the airplane should intercept and follow it. I hope. Start getting slowed up. Let's go flaps to 5 degrees. We're gonna start slowing. Alright, it's not gonna follow it apparently. We gotta make the airplane uh, follow the path. We'll set this for a thousand, that'll be our bottom altitude. Let's go flaps 10. Let's see, 141 was ref, so we're gonna set 146 on the final approach speed. We're gonna go gear down. Last 15. Oh, we are high, guys. I got behind the, the path there. I have to catch it a little bit. Let's go flaps 25, get the drag out there. We need to get down. Otherwise, if we're not stabilized, we'd have to go around. Alright, landing checklist. Uh, start switches, continuous, didn't do that. A little behind the airplane. Alright, continuous. Uh, recalls, check speed break. This arm, planning gear down, three green. Flaps, oh, we need to go flaps 40. Is set and green speed checks. Landing lights are on, checklist is complete. Alright guys, there we go, we're on path now. Throttle and autopilot are off. So right there on the left, where all the you know the monument and everything else over there is prohibited airspace. So One don't want to go in there. We're going to keep it over the river. There's a thousand feet. I'm going to turn my flight director off because otherwise it'll lead me astray on the pitch. 
We're just going to follow the needles. Keeping it over the river. But that's if we get the airplane configured a little bit low. Correcting it a little slow. A little bit of power to correct it. It's going to be a pretty sharp turn here on short final to get it lined up with the runway. Being over the river. We're going to actually bring it to the left a little bit. Help me out. 500. All right, 500 feet, stable approach, we're landing. All right, about here over the bridge. Roll it into that turn. Let's try not to have to go around here. Ooh, we're high, overshooting a little bit. We're correcting it. Ooh, buddy. That Approaching minimum. took a lot more to get around the corner than I was anticipating. Get stable. Minimums. 100, 50, 40, 30, 10. Now a little low on the short final. taxiway right here. Woo! That was a high workload landing, guys. <laughs> that took some work. That was fun, though. Alright, flaps up. Trim, or, uh, spoilers closed. Landing and strobe lights are off. Transponder comes back over to altitude on mode. And we're going to be parking over here. When you open the overhead compartment, be careful, as items may have moved in flight. Yeah, that really took some work. <laughs> I was getting a little behind the airplane there inside of a 10 mile final. But we got it recovered. A stable approach. I really, I thought I was going to be early on that, excuse me, on that final turn. But yeah, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty hectic. There for a second. I thought I was going to have to go around, abort the landing, and uh, try again, but we got it recovered, got it stabilized. I was trying in a little bit low on the short final there. We actually touched down at like 500 feet, which is legal. 500 feet's like the minimum, or the earliest on the runway. You can touch down 500 feet past the end of the runway. But yeah, I was just a few feet low. Um, but like I said, this is a runway where I don't really want to wait too long to land the airplane. Because if you wait too long to land it and you float, then that could, you know, also be a dangerous situation. I think that's the higher risk here at this airport than, uh, than landing a little too early. Alright, we're going to be here in this alley off the left. We'll be making a left hand turn. Actually, we're going to be right here at gate 43. Oh my gosh, field truck. Holy cow. <laughs> this is worse than American Truck Simulator traffic. Alright, we're just going to have to go through the vehicles. Like I said, if there's anything about X-Plane I wish they would change, I wish they would get rid of the ground vehicles at the airports. I like them. You know, they add a little bit to the ambiance, but... And they're ridiculous sometimes. All right, let's get the AP started. Now let's get the taxi light turned off. Oops. Wrong switch. I'm trying to start the APU. <laughs> all right, I gotta go outside view. Now we're all crooked. In real life, you have a marsh alert, or at some airports you have the uh, digital screen that has like a radar and it helps guide the airplane in. Those are pretty common as well. And yeah, that'll work. All right, brake is set. Uh, APU is on its way up. As soon as it gets started, we can uh, shut down both the engines. We'll shut down two though.
we'll keep engine one running until the APU is ready. And also release the seat seatbelt signs here. There we go, APU's online. Gonna switch the bleeds. And shutting down engine one. There we go. We'll open the door here. And yeah. Welcome to uh, Washington DC everybody. We can turn the uh, collision lights off. Prepare for arrival and cross check, thank you. Cool. Alright, well, let me know what you thought guys. That was a pretty fun one. Uh, really enjoyed getting into uh, explaining a little bit again. Actually, before we go, let's do this. Let's watch the replay of the landing. That's always kind of fun to do. Alright, watch your ears, it's probably going to be pretty loud. In fact, I'll turn the, uh, I'm going to turn the sound down a little bit for you guys. That'll help a little bit. So. As we round at the corner here, you can see where it's keeping it over the river. This is one of the coolest approaches, in my opinion. Because, I mean, a lot of approaches, you know, it's just 10 miles away from the runway. You're lined up, and it's straight in. It's real easy. This one, you really have to make turns and really be flying the airplane all the way down to the runway to stay out of this prohibited airspace on the left side. So it's a pretty cool approach. And then you guys saw how abrupt that last turn is. It's coming up here. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. So I was, I was widening up the turn there a little bit because I thought it would make it easier, but I should have started turning to the right a little bit earlier. So I thought I was gonna be right on the runway as we made the turn, but you can see I overshoot just a little bit. Get it recovered. Right about there, we got it fully stabilized, which is good. Right on the 500 foot marks for the landing. That was pretty fun. From the passenger perspective, I mean, if you've been uh, in the back of an airliner, you know what it's kind of like from the passenger cabin. We'll do a little, uh, hang on, do a little bit of this view here. So yeah, you're coming down, there's the Pentagon right there, that's cool. Yeah, and you actually see the airport out here out of your passenger window, which is kind of funny, and then you make the turn. So, it's just something a little different. In real life, it is super fun to do this approach, both as a passenger and as the pilot. But yeah, but this was a fun one. Well, I think I'm comfortable enough with the airplane that I could take this airplane into VATSIM now on a real, you know, ATC network. Yeah, that was a firm touchdown. Yeah, I think I'm comfortable enough now to really take the airplane uh, into VATSIM. My only hesitation at this point, like I said, is just making sure that my computer can maintain 20 frames per second because otherwise it'll boot me off of the uh, that sim network so that wouldn't be fun anyways guys really do appreciate y'all watching the stream I think I'm gonna cut this one right about here I do plan to potentially be on um, maybe America Truck Simulator a little bit later we'll see what the night brings to us but in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.